about the Kaaba. I had a uh, question about the Kaaba. I mean, what is its significance scientifically and logically? And why do Muslims circle around the Kaaba? Brother asked a very good question. That what is the significance of Kaaba scientifically, logically? And why do Muslims circle around the Kaaba? Now, many non Muslims think that we Muslims worship the Kaaba. It is? That's wrong. Correct. I'll give that answer and even come to your scientific answer. I will club both together to answer you and the other non Muslim misconception. The thing is that Kaaba is the Qibla. The Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 144, that wherever you are, pray in the direction of the Kaaba. In Arabic, direction means Qibla. So Kaaba is only for direction. For example, today if you have to pray here, some will say less face north, some will say north, some will say east, some will say west. Where do you face? So for unity, we face towards one direction, Kaaba. So Kaaba is our Qibla. No Muslim ever worships the Kaaba. And when the world map of geography was drawn the first time, it was the Muslims who do the world map first. It was al Drusi in the year 1154 who do the world map. <laughs> and when the Muslims do the world map, they had South Pole on top, North Pole down, and the Kaaba in the center. Later on, the Western cartographers came and they turned the map upside down, North Pole top, South Pole down, yet the Kaaba is in the center. <laughs> so whichever hey. part of the world you are, if you are staying in the north, you face towards the south. If oh, you are in the east, absolutely. you face towards the west. If you are in the west, you face towards the east. If you are in the south, you face towards the north. Absolutely. All Muslims throughout the world, they face in one direction, Kaaba. Kaaba is a Qibla. <laughs> now, when we go for Umrah, or when we go for Hajj, we do Tawaf around the Kaaba, we circumambulate. Why do we circumambulate? Basically because of our God creator, because Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said he did it. You ask me logically what's the reason? <laughs> all right, peace of the Lord to all of you. May the Lord bless you. We will play the rest of the video. But here you see how this stupidity work in this cult. The question is, what is you know significant about the Kaaba? I mean, what 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 the center and the Muslims is the first one who drew the world map? Are you sure? Go right now to Google and you will see that everything this man he said is absolutely a lie. They are liars. They are born to be liars, like their prophet. He asked him why you go around it. He says because the, 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 the prophet says. Uh, Prophet, you know he did that. What, what it was but the question is still why you go around it? You say this is sure just for direction. What direction? How somebody live in Australia can pray in the other direction of the Kaaba? You are, are you mental? You cannot pray in direction of a place if you are far away from it. You know, if I'm like a, a few miles away, if I am maybe 60 miles away, I can say okay, or 70 miles away. But if you are, uh, uh, we are talking about thousands of miles away, you are simply in the other side of the earth. So how you can face the Kaaba if this is for the purpose of direction? Who is the stupid who want to believe such a thing? In fact, this is a proof that the Quran is a book written by someone who is stupid. He is not God and he is not a prophet and he think that you can pray in direction of a city from or from the end of the world so if i live in australia and i want to pray to the direction of the kaaba how i can do that any muslim can tell me how somebody live in australia can pray in the direction of the kaaba any muslim can tell us how somebody live in America can pray in the direction of the Kaaba. We are in the other side of the earth. Literally in the other side. The earth is not flat. So the stupid who come with this, he do not know geography. He do not know astronomy. He do not know anything. In the top of that. Just a few years ago, Indonesians found themselves praying for the wrong direction.
after hundreds of years, they found themselves, I think, praying to Somalia. Here, you will see in the news, this is in the year 2010, not long time ago. Indonesian Muslim turned prayer back to Mecca. After all this time, they were praying to Somalia. So since Indonesia was become a Muslim, or there is Muslims in Indonesia, all those hundreds of years, they could not find even the direction of Mecca. So how somebody will find the direction of Mecca anyway? Where was Allah all this year not to send them Jibreel to tell them, hey, potato, you are praying to the wrong direction. Hmm? And then they've been told after all those centuries that you were praying in the wrong direction. How that can be happening? A woman confused by Qibla Aro in sitting of Bali Hotel room. <laughs> they have an arrow <laughs> where on the ceiling? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy <laughs> so brother did Allah send you a GBS system with a, a plan of direction so you can play in direction in the same time how somebody can live in Indonesia and he can pray in the direction of, of, of Qibla anyway I mean who is the stupid here You know, if Indonesia is a is a country like few miles away from the Kaaba, I can say no problem. But we are talking literally about a country when it is night there, it is morning there. Like now, what is the time in Mecca? Let us see. Mecca. Local time. It is 2, it's 12, 18 a.m. All right. What is Indonesia now? It's 4, 18 a.m. So while it is so dark in Mecca, it is morning time almost in Indonesia. How they are going to find the direction? Did Allah provide you with GPS and all this? You know, thanks to the Western, and the year 2010, you Muslims in Indonesia, you are messed up. You are praying to Somalia. And what happened all those hundreds of years praying to the wrong direction? Why Allah did not send you any sign from anybody? Can't Allah inspire somebody to tell you, hey, this is going to be the direction of Mecca? And how is the direction of Mecca anyway? Like now, okay, suppose you found the direction of Mecca. How you can find it? Because there is no GPS can take you to the direction of Mecca. You see, when airplane goes, the airplane is not going straight in a straight line in direction of Mecca. It's not. The earth is not a flat potato. And now they ask him, why you are, why you Muslims go around the Kaaba? What he said? Look at the funny answer. Uh, Allah knows best. Uh, Prophet, he did that. You know? If you are staying in the north, you face toward the south. If uh -huh. you are in the east, you face toward the west. If you are in the west, you face toward the east. If you are in the south, you face toward the north. That's it. All Muslims throughout the world, they face in one direction, Kaaba. Kaaba is the Qibla. Now, hmm. when we go for Umrah, or when we go for Hajj, we do tawaf around the Kaaba. We circumambulate. Why, Why do we circumambulate? Basically because of our God creator, because Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it. You did, ask me logic. Did you, did you see, did you hear? Be Allah, you know, the messenger of Allah did it. What, 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 what do you do? Why you do it? Why you go around the Kaaba? Why you have to throw rocks? Why you have to kiss the black stone? 
Why the black stone erase your sin? So what do you mean you don't worship the Kaaba? Isn't it the black stone erase your sin? Isn't it the black stone is the right hand of Allah? And now he will give you a scientific reason. Guys, me myself, I cannot wait. I did not I did not watch the video, by the way, before I go live. I just uh, you know, search for it. I heard the first few seconds. And now he want to give us the scientific reason. Aren't you all of you desperate to hear the scientific reason? Let us hear the scientific reason. Particularly what's the reason? Though it's not mentioned in the Quran and the Hadith. If I as a logical person wants to think, why do we circumambulate? Why? The reason I can think is every circle has got one center. We circumambulate around the Kaaba to testify there is one God. <laughs> the circle has got only You circle around the Kaaba to certify there is no only one God. You can so you cannot certify you there is one God without circling around the Kaaba brother. <laughs> I mean, this is the logic, you know, this is logically. The only reason I can think about, he, he's saying he, this is not from the Quran, this is his, his reasoning. The only reason to go around the Kaaba, we, 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 like, you know, Mickey Mouse, when, you know, when Tom and Jerry hit him in the, so it's to certify there's only one God, brother. But you cannot certify God unless you go around the Kaaba. Mr. I have question. Don't you see we are talking? When we are finished our topic, ask me the question. Like, do you have a question there? Yeah? Are you going to keep saying to me, I, 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 uh, Christian Prince, I have a question. Are you going to do that until tomorrow? Like if I ignore you? Are you a kid? Don't you see we have a topic? When we finish, we say we have a, we have a question. Ask, ask me the question. So, brother, we are circumventing around the Kaaba because, you know, brother, we are certifying there is only one God, brother. So what the Shahada for? I thought the Shahada is to say there's no Allah but Allah. I mean, even your Shahada is the most awkward, stupid one ever. If you ask the Muslims what the word Allah means, they say to you mean God, which is false, by the way. It's a, it's, it mean God, yes, but it's not a meaning. It is a, a name for them. Al La Al is a word meaning God. La is the name of the God. However, when you say there's no God but Allah, are you denying God or confirming God? Because you just say there's no God. Saying but Allah does not change the fact that you deny God. If you, what about you say only Allah is God? But when you say there's no God, that means there's no God. And now as long as you have a shahada, which is supposed to, to certify that there is only one God you Muslims you worship, which is a very funny God. So what did this answer is about? You said you go around the Kaaba to certify there's only one God. What does this have to do with this? I thought the shahada does that part. And look at the finger, you know, brother. All the Muslims, they give their finger to Allah. There's only one finger. Only one center, there's two center. We circumambulate testify there's one God. Uh -huh. And the statement of Hazrat Umar, may Allah be peace with him, the second Khalifa of Islam, which uh -huh. is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Hajj, chapter number 56, uh -huh. Hadith number 675. The uh -huh. second Khalifa of Islam, Hazrat Umar said, this black stone, pointing at the Hajj Aswad, the black stone in the Kaaba, this black stone can neither benefit me, can neither harm me. I'm kissing it only because my prophet kissed it. This Do you notice here how, how Umar al-Khattab, he exposed all the religion of Islam? He just said the black stone neither benefit me, neither can harm me. So why it's there? And he said, because the prophet kissed it, I kiss it, which means Muhammad, he did not kiss it for any good reason. Is that correct? And by the way, you can tell that this program is a program, which means those questions already he knew them. He have look, you know, I mean, right away it appeared in the screen, the number, etc. I mean, okay, he said the number, the screen and the number too. So all of this is a fabricated questioning. They gave him the question before he go in the stage. He prepared himself and he claimed now he knew. But what we just heard is enough to prove that Islam is a fraud. 
If Omar, he said, the black stone is useless, simply used, it doesn't have a benefit, doesn't have harm. It's useless. So why Allah send it? Isn't it the Muslim they say Allah send the black stone from heaven? He sent the useless stone? And why he gets it? Because it's useless? Here you see that Umar al-Khattab, because he is arrogant and he always make poo-poo on Muhammad. He don't really, he don't respect Muhammad. Umar, he always a step on Muhammad. You know, I, I, like I wasn't exist in the time of Muhammad, but I imagine Umar as a, someone, he is a very aggressive man and Muhammad, he fear him like a potato. In fact, the prior direction, it was a command of Umar. Not from Allah. How we prove that? If we go in the hadith, we will find the following. Umar, he said, there's many uh, reference. Wafaktu Rabbi. In different hadith, he says, Wafaqani Rabbi, which means my, my Lord agree with me, and I agree with my Lord. Read with me. My Lord concorded with me between two bracket with my judgment <laughs> on three occasions in the case of the station of Ibrahim in the case of observing the veil in the case of a prisoner of war it has continued this is all no it is seen in fact like when you speak about the station of Abraham, because supposedly Muhammad, he claimed that this is where Abraham, he built the Kaaba. But we have a proof from the Quran that this is false. So, Omar, he said, I wish we took the station of Abraham as our prayer place. So the divine inspiration from Allah came as Omar, he said. Same for the hijab or the veil. So that she used to go out at night to do poo-poo. Umar al-Khattab, he used to harass her sexually. And he said to her, the hadith is there. He says, Arafnaki ya Sauda, we recognize you. Which means, I mean, the woman, she is naked. She is doing poo-poo. Imagine how filthy he is. He don't respect Muhammad. I mean, the wife of your prophet, she is doing poo-poo. Why are you even talking to her during the time she is doing poo-poo? And then he went inside the house and he told him, Muhammad, hey man, tell your wives to cover themselves, man. Look how arrogant he is. And then Muhammad, he made verses exactly as Omar he said. If you read this hadith here, you will see it's the same as I have said. The verses, read carefully, read carefully with me. So the verses revealed the same as I had said word by word. Do you see who is making Quran? People, do you see it? Omar, not only he said, like, should we do this maybe? No, no, no. Muhammad, he took exactly what Omar, he said. Omar, he said, let us make the prayer of the Qibla to the Kaaba. The verse came is exactly as Omar, he said. Omar, he said, let us do command women to wear veil. The verse came exactly as I said. Omar, he speak about the wives of Muhammad. The verses came exactly as I had said. So who is the prophet? In fact, Muhammad, to cover his ass, he said, if there is a prophet to come after me, that would be Omar. <laughs> Can you believe it? Why, hey Muslims, why, why Omar? Because Omar got him busted. Omar, he knew that he is copying him. Let us say Muhammad is bribing Omar, saying to him, okay, you know, everyone knows now. I mean, you know that I'm copying you. I'm stealing your Quran and I am a fake prophet. 
let us cover our the ass for each other. If there is a prophet will come after me, it's going to be Omar. Why Muhammad he says that? He's Allah. Hmm? Let us see to find you the hadith for that. <clears throat> Uh, all right, let's see. لو كان بعدي نبي لكان عمر الخطاب. Okay, let us search for this one. So the reason Muslims they pray in the direction of the Kaaba, it is Umar al-Khattab. The Messenger of Allah said, if there was to have a prophet after me, it would have been Omar ibn al-Khattab. Do you see it? And this is a very authentic hadith. It is Omar, my friend. But when Omar, he said, well, this uh, stone is useless. And then Muhammad, he said that this stone is going to witness for Muslims in the Day of Judgment. Which one we take? As you see, the Muslims, they are taking what uh, Omar, he said. And, uh, you know, they are throwing their prophet under the bus. We just heard. Zakir Naik. You see, that the, the, because mu Muslims as a people who follow Islam, they have low decency. If you ask yourself, which one Zakir Naik should take, what Omar said or what Muhammad said, you will say to yourself for sure what Muhammad said. There is no way he will take what Omar said above what his prophet said. The reality, no. As you see, he took what Omar said. But why he took it? Because he's trying to prove that they are not black stone worshippers. And he ignored everything his prophet says about the black stone sent by Allah. It was whiter than milk. And then the sin of mankind made it black and is going to have eyes and is going to have mouth, is going to have a tongue in the day of judgment, is going to witness for us. We will show you all the reference. But now because they are going to defend Islam from being a pagan religion, kissing stones, going around the stones, worshiping the stones, so what he said, what he did, he go to what Omar said, which is exposing all the cult of Islam. What Omar said? Well, this is a stone. Is user, you know, doesn't hurt me, doesn't benefit me. So why it's there? The reason I can think is every circle has got one center. We circumambulate around the Kaaba to testify there is one God. Because circle has got only one center, doesn't have two center. We circumambulate to testify there is one God. And the statement of Hazrat Umar, may Allah be peace with him, the second Khalifa of Islam, uh -huh. which is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Hajj, chapter number 56, hadith number 675. The second Khalifa of Islam, Hazrat Umar said, this black stone, pointing at the Hajj Aswad, the black stone in the Kaaba, uh -huh. this black stone can neither benefit me, can neither harm me. I'm kissing it only because my Prophet kissed it. This statement proves <laughs> that no Muslim ever worships the Kaaba. So, <laughs> look how stupid this religion is. Okay, as long as it doesn't benefit you and doesn't harm you, Omar. So, Muhammad, he kissed it. Shouldn't you ask Muhammad why you are kissing it, you idiot? It doesn't harm, it doesn't benefit. He was there, why Muhammad kissed it? If you remember once, I recorded my chat with the Muslim uh, website. It's called like Convert to Islam something. I asked them, why a uh, prophet of Allah kissed a black stone? Took them five minutes to respond. I remember, you know, I, I, I did actually the chat live on air. After five minutes, they said, because it's holy. I said, okay. Why it's holy? Took them another five minutes, and they said, because he kissed <laughs>
<clears throat> and now let us examine which one we can follow what Omar said or what Muhammad said because if, if this stone is useless and harmless and Muhammad he said the opposite that means Muhammad is a fraud we go in the hadith and we find here the following that the black stone is going to come to us in the day of judgment it's reported by Allah messenger saying concerning the stone I swear by Allah the man he swear Allah certainly will raise it up what the stone will raise up yeah yeah it's a creature mm -hmm. and on the day of resurrection with eyes which it will see and the tongue which will speak and it will give testimony about those who touch it in proper manner do you see it do you see it and those hadith all are authentic so when Omar he said the black stone is useless that means Muhammad is a useless prophet too he's a liar in fact Muhammad he made it clear that touching the black stones and the Yemeni corner it erase your sin so not only the black stone is going to have eyes and tongue and is going to speak and is going to be alive and is going to be a witness the black stone have a duty right now as we speak to erase your sin Let me see if I can find the other hadith. <clears throat> hmm. Okay, let us see here. As you see, Muslims cannot answer a question about their, you know, pagan cult with decency because decency will destroy Islam. However, even when they try to hide it, it's still doing the same. You know, it's still destroying Islam. The stone is useless. Omar said, the stone is very useful. Muhammad said, which one of them is telling the truth? I agree with Omar. There's no question. Muhammad is a fraud. Here we go. In this hadith here, which is Hassan, which means good. Hassan is one of the names of uh, the grandsons of Muhammad. You don't name your son Hassan unless it's something good. That's what his name means. Hassan means good. So it says here, Abu Abdul Rahman, why I only see you touching those two corners, which mean the Yemeni corner. The, yeah, it's called Yemeni corner because they brought stones from the temple of Al Makkah in. Uh, Yemen which is the moon god temple and the reason they they brought those stones is to bring people to to do a hajj <clears throat> like you know why you want to go all the way to the temple of al makkah which is the same name Mecca, all the way to Yemen to perform hajj we bring you the stones here so they brought the stones from that temple supposedly and they put it in the Yemeni corner so it's called the Yemeni corner because this is facing Yemen and the stone is there is coming from Yemen so now people do not need to go to Yemen to get the blessing from the stones of the moon god by touching them well they are here in the Kaaba so now we have two things we have the Yemeni stones from Yemen from the moon god temple and now we have the black stone we touch them both and we go around the Kaaba for very very simple reason you know the Arab before Islam they used to free a slave when they feel guilty like somebody do something bad he feel guilty so what he do he go free slave Muhammad he don't want them to free slaves because he wants slavery to flourish 
So what he told them, if you touch the black stone or the ymani corner, it erases your sin, and it's the same as a freeing a slave. So now, no, which one is easier, to go touch a stone or to free a slave? For sure, touching the stone. You just touch the stone. And as you see, he is saying it clear that it's erase your sin. Touching them erases sin. But we just heard him saying, Omar, he said the black stone is useless. Who is lying to who? Obviously, Muhammad. I agree with Omar. Omar is speaking the truth in this case. This stone is useless. Muhammad is a fraud, making up stories about the stone that is going to have eyes, is going to have a tongue, is going to witness in the Day of Judgment. And, you know, we showed you the black stone yesterday. <clears throat> There's nothing left of it. How is going? How this stone is going to witness? This is additional proof that the black stone is a fraud. It's just a pagan fake story. How the black stone is going to witness at the day of judgment, and there's no black stone left. There's little tiny rocks in the size of one centimeter. And the rest is wax. So what stone is going to witness for us if there is no stone left? And you know, if we go with the statement of Muhammad that the black stone is going to uh, witness for us in the Day of Judgment, Let us see how that will happen. Just to show you how stupid the story is. So this is the black stone. <clears throat> we will put it in the front of you. There is many websites when you click and then they are fraud. You know, there is nothing there really. All right. Let us find another one. All right, let's use this one. Look at this. So this is the black stone, which Allah is going to send to us in the day of judgment, and is going to have, you know, as the hadith says, we we will we will draw what Muhammad said. Can should we? We will read the hadith again, and we will do exactly as Muhammad he said, to see how the black stone is going to look like in the Day of Judgment. Let us check it out. So now, let us go to what Muhammad said first in the hadith. Let us go back to the hadith. The message of Allah said, is, is the text clear, guys? You can read it, or I need to zoom in. Let me zoom in a little bit. The message of Allah said, the black stone by Allah, he swears the message is serious, serious, very serious, will, will raise it on the day of resurrection, which means it's going to be the living, living being. Do, do you see the raise it, raise it? In the day of resurrection, with two eyes, by which it will see, and a tongue that it speak with testifying to who, whoever touch touch it in 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 uh, like in truth. All right, let us do a little drawing and see how this stone will look like. Maybe this one is better. So the, the black stone is the one at the end and inside, and the, the frame just represents the vagina, which used to be exist. Supposedly, this is this is how it used to be in the old days. But since uh, many they stole the stone and destroyed the stone, and then there's nothing left of the stone. 
So let us see here. All right, let us say uh, median. So here, let us zoom a little bit more. So you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. I know, I know, many of you will get jealous because now you will see how good I am in drawing. It's okay, you know. So it's going to have two eyes. And don't worry, I'm going to put some eye, uh, you know, lashes to make it more sexy. So he said it's going to have eyes to see with it. I mean, he can't tell how good I'm drawing. I mean, look at this, unbelievable. Man, I know many women, they wish to have women like that. I mean, like... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's okay. It's okay. <clears throat> I can. By the way, I'm so good in doing plastic surgery too. Like, if you are a, a person you want your eyes to be bigger, you know, you can just don't contact me. And then, it's going to be a tongue without, with no mouth. Ah, okay. So we have to draw a tongue without mouth. Okay, thank you for telling me. And now the tongue. So this is the tongue. And let us make it all yellow, you know. So this is the tongue is going to witness for us in the day of judgment. Who is a Muslim here? He agree and he believe in such a stupid, silly story. Do we have any? And now the stone in the day of judgment is going to start talking and witnessing. But that's it. That's crazy. That me. And when he cut me, he cut me from my left. And I talk all day from with him. So I took all day from him, and today I'm going to witness it for him. So you go to, to the stone. Uh, <laughs> you go to do a hedge, and then you you know you suck the vagina, which is the black stone. And the second you put your mouth there, the black stone is going to suck all your stories. And, you know, like yeah, it's, it's a sucking time. She, you know, the black stone will suck you literally. So we'll suck all the info about you. And now in the day of judgment is going to download your file. So it's going to speak in her tongue. And by the way, the eyes is to be sure it's you. Like, you know, yeah, this is him, you know. <laughs> but we just heard Zach and I quoting Omar saying that this black stone is useless. So which one is true? Hmm? <laughs> in different hadith Muhammad he said that the black stone is the right hand of Allah <laughs> but we just heard Zach and Naik saying the black stone is, 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 neither benefit me or harm me so which one Muslims is saying the truth you're a prophet Muhammad, oh, hold on, guys. I notice here that one eye is open and the other eye is closed. That's not acceptable. No, 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 no. Not in my gallery, you know. In my gallery, everything has to be perfect. Let me fix it. Let me fix it. All right, give me a second. Give me a second. I just noticed, you know, like, you know, us, I mean, people who they are artists like us, we cannot accept, like, mistakes here and there. No, you know, we are very much into details. So let us fix this. I'm going to take the whole eyes off and fix it. All right. And uh, you will thank me later. <clears throat> hmm. And now I'm erasing the sin of the black stone itself. Remember the, the, the black stone erase your sin. <laughs> True story. <laughs> All right. Now we go back to art. Look, look, let me teach you how to do that. I know many of you are ignorant, you know, art, and, you know. Do you know the, you know, the artist, his name, uh, uh, what's his name? I forgot. He's used to make the coffee for me. I forgot. Yeah. Too many of them. Uh, yeah, he, you know, uh, yeah, you know, you know the thing. 
Okay, so he used to, uh, you know, uh, make coffee for me. And once he split, like, oh, sp uh, uh, like, like he pushed the coffee on on my drawing. I can't believe it. And then it's called uh, since then it's called the drawing, the the the, the dark or uh, or, uh, or the dark what? I forgot the name anyway because it became so famous. You know, I cannot take it no more. Don't remind me, please, of the history. You know. So look now what happened. This is the eyes. Look at this. I will make them big. And uh, here is the other eye. Look at the details. Look, look with me. Look. Oh, hold on. There is a. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. These days. I'm not doing good with art, you know, since I changed my career from a drawing human to drawing stones, you know. So, like, sometimes it's not working fine, uh, but it will work. It will work. Hold on. Give me a second. All right. So, here. All right. Subhanallah, look how beautiful, look how beautiful, both of them, they are perfect match, you know, you might, from your side, from your angle, you might see one of them is too much open, the other one is closed, because it's what she was plinking to me, yeah, the, the blackstone plink, you know, like plink, you know, like, you know, like, you know, like, if he's a female, you know, you know the thing, yeah, so, uh, uh, and, you know, uh, by the way, if you are a person who is a believer, the black stone is going to have green eyes when you look at you, you know, here, green eyes, okay? Like because the background is, uh, is uh, black, so it doesn't show. However, if you are a person who is a disbeliever, the black stone will look at you with red eyes. Now you get the whole picture about what will happen really in the day of judgment. And who in the world now will not convert to Islam and accept reality that Muhammad is telling the truth about the black stone? He's going to have a tongue, but Muhammad, he did not mention a mouth. But I'm assuming there's a mouth. Otherwise, it's going to be funny that there's a tongue coming from the stone. Like, but it's a tongue. The black stone is going to have tongue. Exactly, Nayak, you eat it. A second ago, you told us that Omar al-Khattab, he said it's useless, it's harmless, no benefit. Which one of you is telling the truth? Hmm? Hmm? I'm an artist like Biden's son. Are you insulting me? What Biden's son? You know, I mean, come on. That guy, he's getting paid because he is uh, the president, uh, you know, bribe. Uh, people buy my my paint for no bribe. Are you kidding me? If I put this in uh, in eBay, huh? do you know how many people they will bid on it? You want to bid? Do you want to bid? Honestly, in this world, it's really weird. If I take now a screenshot and I post it in eBay, I bet you, just for the sake of fun, some people will buy it. <laughs> so Muslims, is that really from God? And you are not really a pagan? Here we go. So the black stone erase your sin. The black stone is a living creature. The black stone is a witness for you. So why Allah, so I thought Allah, he knew everything about you, what the black stone is going to witness for you. And why the black stone is going to have eyes. Your Bible says prophet will come after Jesus named Muhammad. Ah, yeah, you see, and the prophet, he just came and he announced that the black stone is going to have a face and tongue. Abdul, why you are, you, okay, why you are changing topic? Okay, guys. My Bible, I thought my Bible is corrupted. 
<laughs> you know the Abdul religion when they want the Bible is useless when the when they want the Bible is useful when they want the Bible we cannot don't listen to it when they want the Bible is about Prophet Muhammad uh, yeah Abdul in the Bible it says Muhammad in my Bible so why the Quran saying that the one who spoke about Muhammad is Isa only and he said there's a prophet after me will come his name is Ahmad are you confirming the Quran is corrupted because is it Muhammad or Ahmad who will come and now it does go back to the relaxed stone looks so cute I cannot even keep my eyes away from it excuse me guys I'm single as you know and the black stone is a female in the top of that it is in the shape of a vagina so how many things are tempting for us as single men I mean look at this it must be from God hey Muslims can you tell us why why it's look like this what is that what's going on this is really the black stone she is yours sky cat do you have a, do you have an idea how many men they touch this stone I feel sorry if you take this stone as a wife you literally got the most molested wife ever in history <laughs> not a single Abdul did not sexually molest her and kiss her and touch her and yeah what what is this who is a Muslim believe really that the black stone is going to have a mouth, a tongue? Who do you really Muslim believe in what Muhammad saying? Or you are going to throw your prophet Muhammad under the bus? I'm going to open my sky and see if there is any Muhammad who would like to join us. Uh -uh. We spoke yesterday in comment section. I officially challenge you. <laughs> <coughs> Guys, I like it when somebody say to me, officially challenge me. Let us call the guy. Officially? Listen, it's officially. This is official now. It's serious. Hello. Hello. Uh, it's you, yeah. So you are officially challenging me, Mr. Sultan? Hmm. Hello. Yeah, what do you think about our topic, the black stone? Uh, uh, so you want to speak about black stone, yeah? Okay, no problem. Uh, let's discuss, but uh, can we introduce ourselves first? Like, uh, you are Christian Prince, I know you live in America. Do you mind if I will ask how old are you? I'm very old. How about you? Are you very young? Mm, I'm um, 28. Okay, you can add like a hundred year for me. What that what that have what, what that have to do with my topic? Are we going to have coffee now and you will become my friend? What is this? You know, you said you challenge me officially. Yeah. Just go to the topic. We don't want to waste the time, your time and my time and the time of the people. So your name is Sultan, correct? Absolutely correct. Sultan okay. All, all of this is your name? All of this Sorry? is your name? All of this is your name, Sultan C. Yeah, Sultan Constantine Mehmet Huzaifa the Dai Muntian. Oh, well, this is like Indonesian name? Sorry? Is that an Indonesian name? No, it's a name that I changed uh, through that, that Dipol or how it's called. Here in England, you can change your name. And, okay. uh, I changed it. But uh, I mean, how many words? Sultan, C. Mehmet, Hudaifa. The D Montaigne. What what the, the D Montaigne? Yeah, what the, 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 ah, the die, the die. Okay, okay. So again, my, my my friend, no problem. Your name is whatever it is. I will call you Sultan as long as this is your name. So tell okay, us about tell us about the black stone. As you see, your prophet he says is going to have eyes and tongue in the day of judgment. Do you agree? Uh, 
Uh, firstly, let me uh, introduce myself. Like, uh, you tell my name. Uh, I'm 28, as I told you. And I am a sticker of truth. Uh, uh -huh. I've been a uh, Christian. I've been born as a Christian. Then I became agnostic. Then I became atheist. Uh, finally, I went to US. Over there, I met a lot of uh, lovely people who introduced uh, me to church and everything. So I became. Uh, how, how is a Krishna package. doing? How how is a Krishna doing these days? Who is Krishna? I don't know because you keep saying to me, I was this, I was that, I became that. And Christian, Just Christian. tell me, my, my friend, go to the topic. I, who cares what you used to be, what you are? You said you are a Muslim. Go for it. Now. What do you think about the black stone is going to have tongue and eyes and they're going to witness for you in the day of judgment? Go ahead. Okay, so it's been what does it say? Huh? What does it mean? Uh, you just told that it will uh, witness on the day of judgment, yes? So yeah, but, uh, but, but, we, but we just heard Zachar Nayak in the video saying that the black stone is useless and harmless. So. True. If, Okay, it's true. So that means Muhammad is lying. Either the black stone is not going to be useful or is going to be useful. Here, according to Muhammad, you agreed that the black stone is going to have eyes and tongue as going to witness for you. So it's useful, not useless. Okay, but this is not mandatory for every Muslim. So It's not about mandatory or not. No, it's a mandatory. Whatever your prophet said, it is a mandatory. It's not up to you. So if Omar say this stone is useless and you agree with you, with him, yeah. and then yeah. you agree with Muhammad, so which one? You cannot agree with both because one of them is, is lying. Either the stone is useful or the stone is useless. It can be useful and useless at the same time. So in your opinion, two truths cannot be truth, yes? Truth cannot be truth. That's, a, that's deep. No, you just said Mohammed told that uh, the stone will witness. It's true, and uh, Zakir whatever told that uh, the stone is useless. It's true, and both of them can be in the same time right. How? If it's useless, it means it's useless. There's no benefit from it. It's he not is, it, useless. It's no, not useless. No, it is. He said. He said. He said that the black stone neither benefit me, neither harm me. Here, Muhammad saying, no, the black stone is going to be resurrected in the day of judgment and is going to be witnessing for whoever touch it and kiss it in truth and is going to have eyes and tongues. So, True. okay, so is it going to be a useful tool for Allah to witness for you in the day of judgment or it is useless? It will be a useful tool to witness against you. Okay, but, uh, but, but, but you uh, said, but no, you no, said. Don't interrupt me. Why you keep attacking me with putting your understanding? The fact that that's why I ask how old are you? Because you have an understanding of a little child. No so problem. I'm six years I'm old. Like, okay, what little child means? Six years hey. old? Six years old? I don't know. The child to convert well, I don't know. 50 years you're, old. But you're all the stories of your prophet. The child. All the stories of your prophet is coming from a child. And who is the child here? It's you. In one second, you say to me that the stone is useless. In the other second, you said, I agree with the prophet, it's useful. So who is the dummy in the child now? How you can be an adult, mature? And then you contradict yourself in the same sentence. Okay, look, you just asked me a question. Who is the dummy in this way? Is the dummy uh, that who understand that both of the uh, stories is truth or a dummy who don't understand it? I understand it. You don't understand. Okay, so Ex explain to us as long as you understand it. How the stone is going to witness for us and it's useful and how it is not useful. Go ahead. The stone, Go. as it tells in the Islamic creed. There is pillars, and one of the pillars is to go and uh, to keep uh, do the pilgrimage to Mecca and kiss the stone if you can, not kiss, touch it, whatever. Oh, okay. And as I told you, it's useless. Stone itself is useless. The stone, <laughs> it's just uh, an action. The action that you what did, action? <laughs> that you went to the Mecca hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, it. hold on. What action? The stone is an action. The stone is an action. 
Are you, you how old are you, bro? How listen, can listen. You, you say the stone. stone you say the stone yeah. is an action. How the stone is an action? It's a stone. The stone. The fact that you go to Mecca and uh -huh. touch the stone. This is action. Okay. And so stone, no, no, no. Hold on. I'm not asking you what do you do. I'm asking you. Listen. You see how how childish you are. We ask you about if the if the stone is useless. The stone itself. I'm not asking you what you do with it. It's you can say you touch it. No, it's so it's useful. it's useful. So why are Zachar Naik saying that he believed that the black stone neither harm, do any harm, neither do any benefit, no benefit? Okay, who is Zachar Naik? Why should? He's a he's a, he he is a he is, he is a Muslim prophet, very well known, and uh, Muslims so, around the world they come and do Hajj to him. Don't you see? He he have more people attending him more than the Kaaba itself. Okay, good for him. I worship uh, Allah. I worship uh, Allah Almighty. Okay, what uh, what, about, him, what, about, what about what about what about and I listen only what Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was doing okay, in what his about, lifetime. What about uh, Prophet Umar al Khattab? I don't know this Prophet. Well, your Prophet said if there is a Prophet will come after me, it's going to be Umar, and now you do not know him. Umar al Khattab is a is a caliphate. And he's the companion of Muhammad. And Zakir Naik, in fact, he was quoting Umar al-Khattab. So you are uh -huh. calling me, listen, you are calling me and you said you want to challenge me officially. And yeah. you do not know that the one who said that sentence is Umar, not Zakir. And he kind of was the prophet after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa What? I'm asking you. Are you saying to me that you do not know that the one who said that sentence that the black stone neither harm me neither benefit me is Omar? Obviously you do not because you thought it is Zakir Naik who said that. that. Okay, Omar al-Khattab is named by no, your no, prophet me, to be a prophet him. to be a prophet me, after him. Omar al-Khattab called to be a prophet after Muhammad. Muhammad called him. He said, if there is a prophet okay. come to me after me, it's going to be Omar. And Omar okay, he said, and, uh, stop, 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 stop. And what Quran says that Muhammad is the last prophet. So doesn't matter that Muhammad will say that to, to where, be where, a where in the Quran, the Quran, where in the Quran, it's, where in the Quran. The last, okay, hold on. Where in the Quran, Quran it says Muhammad is the last prophet? Somewhere. Somewhere. So you call me yes. to do official challenge to say to me somewhere? Of course. Oh, is that, how, is, that how is that how is that how official is that how official challenge work? Somebody ask you, you say somewhere. Huh? And your your name is long like a train. Yes. Okay, but you do not know where it did it, it, it says that in the Quran somewhere. I will find you if you. I will can call you tomorrow and tell you exactly where. You need to call me tomorrow to find the verse. It will take me two seconds to find. Here we go. I found it for you. Chapter thirty-three, verse number forty. Okay. Thank yeah, you. But but it doesn't say he is the last prophet. That's false. It says he is the seal who stamp on the prophet, which means he is the one who confirmed the prophet before him. Khatim. Khatim is seal. Khatim word means seal. He is not the okay. last prophet. Yeah, so you Muslims, you lie when you say that and this is about is Muhammad seal? being a false. No, a seal mean he is he he is the one who confirmed all the prophets before him. That's all. No, where it says oh. this is he's the last prophet. Seal, uh, it means also when you seal, you end. You <laughs> seal the prophet. He did not seal anything uh, because it's, it's, it's still not, my friend. It's not it's not, it's, it's, it's not up to you. It's not it's not up to you. Hold on. Time to say something. Hold on. Jumping, jumping. Hold okay. on. This is not how a conversation. Uh, this is how. This is no. This is how a conversation. You know, are you going to teach me Arabic? Seal, seal in Arabic is a khatam. Khatam, khatam, khatam is a stamp. This is what khatam means. Stamp. Do you stamp. logic? Stamp. Logic. Stamp. Mm -hmm. Khatam okay. is a stamp. Okay. So okay. he is the stamp of the prophet, which means he is the one who confirmed all the prophet before him. That's it. Same time, okay. when you say Muhammad is a prophet, can you give me the prophecy in the Quran, which is proven to be a prophecy? Mm, yes, like people building uh, buildings in the desert. This is in the Quran? No, this is the prophecy, is what he is said. Okay, people building in the desert before Muhammad. Is it the Kaaba is a high building in the desert anyway? And it exists before Muhammad? 
Isn't it all the people of Yemen, they build high building in the desert and it's high building? Isn't it the city of Betra is a very high in the mountain, massive buildings? So this is always exist before Muhammad. What is new? Nothing new. This exists thousands of years before Muhammad. In the top of that, shouldn't the prophecy be in the Quran? So your prophet, he prophesied, but his prophecy is not in the Quran. It's a hadith, which is written by somebody 300 years after Muhammad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jude, do you understand? What no, no, I don't understand. Really, no, no, you understand. So I'm asking you, give me a prophecy from the Quran, proving that Muhammad is a prophet. As an example, I can give you one. Do you want to help you? No, I don't want Okay, you then help me. You tell me. Give me a prophecy from the Quran about Muhammad being a prophet. Go ahead. As I just told you, the what you told me? that it will be buildings that the. But this is not in the Quran, and I answer you, this is false because simply the buildings is, exist even before. The city of Betra in Jordan is in the desert. It's it's built thousands of years before Muhammad. The same as the cities in Yemen, Sana'a, uh, uh, Ma'arib, etc. Uh, the, the the queen Balkis, you know, they have high buildings. This is this is the desert. So this is a stupid. I'm asking you, can you give me a prophecy from the Quran about your prophet? Why you Muslim calling him a prophet if the guy he couldn't have a good prophecy? All all his statement is a joke. As an example, as an example in the Quran, does it say that Allah told Muhammad a prophecy about how the baby is made? Is it true? One second. I will give you a proper prophecy. Oh, okay, Davis. give me a prophecy, sure, sure. So, <clears throat> okay, the Byzantine, no, not this one. Let's look at the... The Byzantine? Well, this is a false prophecy, because... The Muhammad... globalization of Islam, it's something that is happening right now. What, what? Globalization of Islam. Globalization of Islam. Well, your prophet, he said that Islam will go small as the snake goes back to its hole. What a globalization of Islam. Same time, you know, uh, uh, Islam is uh, not globalized because it is really spreading, but because of the Internet. You know, here we go. I am a city in a country. You are sitting in the country. If this is what, what make a prophecy, well, the Bible mentioned that long time before Muhammad and it's enter every house in the world. What does have to do with this? How that can be a prophecy? That's false. Religion, okay. every uh, religion, even okay. the Hindu, even the Hindus, even the Buddhist, even uh, Krishna. I heard about Krishna. Does that mean that uh, Krishna entered my house? No. There's many no. people heard about Muhammad and they laugh at Muhammad. Does that mean Muhammad entered our house? No. So Islam still is a dead religion and you Muslim don't even follow Islam. Look at you in Muslim countries. Nobody want to follow Islam. Okay, uh, good. this is your opinion. When no, you this is not my opinion. opinion. This is not. This is not my opinion. Okay, this let me ask you. Do you, do you listen? Do you listen to music? Mm, yes, I listen sometimes. Okay, according to Islam, you are going to go to hell. So you are not a Muslim. See, so even you who I claim be, to be a die, you are I not practicing ever. Islam. My I'm friend. a human. Of course, I am. Doing what do you mean you are a human? I'm, I'm so human. glad, guys. He is a human. I thought you are not. Thank you for telling me. Who cares if you are a human or not? You're a prophet. He said that Allah will make you a pig for listening to music, and you are telling me you are a human. So what? Uh, can I answer? <laughs> because you are really attacking me with. I'm not. So I'm not. I'm not. I ask you. I yes, ask you yes, a question. So me, do look, you listen you to are, music? You said to me. I said to you, you listen to music, you said yes. Okay. According to your prophet, yes. Allah will make you a pig and a monkey and the hate in front of you. It's Sahih. I'm asking for the single time. Huh? Um, hello? I'm listening to music, but I ask forgiveness every single time when I'm doing it. Uh -huh. So, but, but his hair, it say, doesn't say if he'll forgive you, it says Allah will make you a pig. For listening to music. No, it will make you. So okay. You so now you. So so. You don't but, repent. Okay. Do you do you agree? Do you agree with me? Is it true that all Muslim world they watch porn? As an example, if we go right now to Google, it says that Pakistan is number one country in the world searching for sex with donkey. How you explain that to me? Those are the I most religious. Know. 
the most conservative Muslims. Sex with donkey. Like that's not even a sex with the human. It sticks with the donkey. What's wrong with you Muslims? Mm -hmm. To the point they say it, it's called porn stand, not back stand. So here we go. And now you are saying to me, okay, I, I disobey Allah and I ask for forgiveness. Do you search for sex with donkey too? Just, uh, can we go and uh, you uh, put too many points that I want to uh, tell you about everything. Firstly, you ask about uh, a prophet, uh, so the Quran proves that Muhammad is a prophet, yes? No, hold on, hold on. If Muhammad, no, he said, okay, okay, in, a front, in the front of us, in the front of us, we have a prophecy. It says, yes. people among my nation will drink wine, calling it by another name. And the musical okay. instrument will be played for them, and singing okay. birds will sing for them. Allah will cause the earth to swallow them, and they will turn into turn them into monkeys and pigs. Okay, your prophet he made a prophecy. Name for me one Muslim he did those things, and Allah made him a pig or a monkey. Look around in every city. Do you see a lot of people? I see a lot of monkeys and pigs. I'm asking so you. He, how, he said. How, how he said. He said the, the earth. He said. Listen. 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 He said the earth would swallow them, and yeah. will turn them into pigs and monkeys. Name for me one Muslim, because he drank wine no, and he listened to singing music. The no, earth is swallow you just, him. You just. You just read something. Let's analyze it and uh, critically understand what does it mean, and look what happens in the reality. Yeah, that's okay. what happened. That's what you mean, my friend. And what, you think your conclusion is true, dude? What, what do you mean? What, you are not all wise. What do you, you mean? Are what, not what, all what, wise. What, what you do are you mean? Potato, what, which you, you are calling each one that everyone is potato. You are the biggest potato, the head of potato. Okay, I, I, you are you are right about being the head of the potatoes because all of you are your head. Okay, so listen. So now, did the earth swallow any Muslim because he drank wine and because he listened to singing girls, or this is all is a fraud? Did Allah, he made any Muslim a pig or a monkey beside you? What is earth? Tell me what is earth? Earth you is, are not uh, so, that earth okay, I will tell you, I will tell you what earth. Eat you. Earth you is, a, earth depend. If you are a person live in Pakistan, earth for you is, uh, you know, earth in so is, uh, this life, earth to life, earth. Oh, okay. Earth to life swallows out and transforms people in pigs and monkeys because, uh, the so, earth, ac so according earth, to your uh, according to your understanding, the word earth mean pizza. Not pizza. How you I don't know. So you are telling me, okay. So what is earth? What is earth? I don't understand. Earth is what? Life, so the earth will life, swallow you. This huh? life, this life, this life, this temporary life. Ah, the, the life. You. So now the earth. Because so the word earth now became life. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and the word pig would, is what. The people yep. who don't obey the rules and go to drunk, sing, okay. whatever, they All right. like monkeys, so, like pigs. The, the, Everything the, the, what the crop it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't say listen, listen, it doesn't say like pigs. It says Allah will turn them into pigs. Okay. What okay? Why you are lying uh, then? Yeah, Why you are saying me, like it, me, it will make them like the pigs? Pig. When go, it's, on Google, go on Google right now, how you use uh, Google a lot, uh, write pig, description of the pig, and let's see. All right, if, uh, we, okay, nice talking to you, nice, nice, nice talking to you, you know, like you are, so, I cannot even debate someone like you, you are so smart, man. I mean, that's it, you defeated me in two seconds, and officially you want to debate me? Like, are you sure? Like you type for me, you say, officially, I'm the one who challenged you officially? Are you an official potato? You are. Like pigs? What like pigs? It says we'll turn them into pigs. That is called the second Muslim. Officially, guys, you want to debate me officially. This is, by the way, was an official debate. Don't be, don't be confused. This is was really official. This is Zach and Nick, uh, you know, that's calling me. What? Well, the guy, he hang up on me. Why? He called me, call me. I call him. He, what? Officially. <laughs> Hello. 
Ah, it says he's not online. What we can do? Okay, just another Abdul. Uh, missed cold. Okay, this guy is calling me liar. It must be Fakira. I know some of you would like to hear more of this idiot, but uh, it's just a waste of time. Okay, this guy is not answering. What you will do? We apologize for the sound of Skype. Well, there's no way to mute this thing. Uh, All right, we have somebody, he called us. All right, let's see this guy. Hmm. If there's any sheik officially you want to debate me? Any sheik officially want to debate me? They are not answering. They are officially, all of them, backing down. Officially. I am the one who challenged you yesterday to debate you officially. Uh -huh. That was deep. That was very deep. Officially. Actually, what we see in the front of us, it's a clear proof that Muhammad is a fraud. If the one who drink wine and listen to music, this is all the Muslims. All the Muslims, they drink wine. I mean, they are actually in the Middle East. Christian, they sell the wine. The Muslims who buy it, go check it out. Christian in the Middle East, they drink wine, yes, but little. But the one who go crazy and go drunk is the Muslims. The one who is the, the number one customers is the Muslims. Porn. Music, etc. Where is the earth is swallowing them? And Muhammad himself, he drink wine, and he promote wine, and he encourage people to drink wine. The Quran. Do you remember the stupid uh, Abdul with his name Zakar? What not Zakar? Like, no, uh, Nader Ahmad. Nader Ahmad. <clears throat> when he called me, this guy he called everybody. He have one topic. He called uh, uh, David Wood. Uh, you know, David Wood, the Quran, uh, you know, proved scientifically true that uh, drinking wine is causing a defect birth. So uh, Christian women, they give birth defect, uh, you know, okay, you know, okay. So, and he called, this is David Wood debate, you can watch it. And, you know, David Wood is not good in debating, sadly. So he got away with it. Then he called the other guy, what's his name? I think Anthony Roger or something like that. Uh, you know, the Bible, you know, did not forbid wine. The, the Quran forbid wine, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you know, he got away with it. He called me. He asked me the same question. Then Christian Prince, as usual, <laughs> ask him a very simple question. So is wine, is alcohol good or bad? <laughs> and then, and then that Rahmat, <clears throat> You know, another Ahmadi knew me very well. He knew if I ask question, that means there's a screwdriver is coming to go in his anus right away. So, uh, Christian Prince, this is not a proper question. Look, what the heck? The whole debate is about alcohol. Now, this is not a proper question. So, uh, listen, Nader, is alcohol good or bad? <laughs> Christian Prince, uh, stop running away from me. Stop running away from me. Exactly. Another, come on. You know? Yeah. Oh, boy. Or what is the, the other guy? Do you remember him? What's his name? Perfect Dawa. <laughs> Perfect Dawa. He debate another Ahmed. Sorry, debate as uh, David Wood. Debate, I think, Apostate Prophet. And they could not really, I mean, uh, he, because he's a liar, you know, he's just a deceiver, stupid, you know, he lie a lot. When he called me, I wiped the floor with him. 
The problem is most of the Christians and even atheists, they do not know really how to debate Muslims. They don't. You cannot debate a liar. You have to get him busted. You don't debate a liar. Never, never. You cannot. If you are thinking of a debate, you will never win a debate with someone who lie. Because it doesn't matter what you say, he lie about it. So how you are going to get the answer if the answer is a lie? The only way to debate a liar is not to debate him, but to get him busted. This is what you should do with Muhammadans. You cannot debate a liar. You cannot. It's impossible. This guy is calling me again. Why you are calling me again, Mr. Official Debate? Because you got scared like a coward and it turned out. No problem. You can say whatever you want, but we are laughing. You are just silly. You do not know what you are talking about. The, the hadith says, your prophet, he says, Allah will turn them into pigs and monkeys. You say to me, like pigs and monkeys? Why you are lying? Did, did, your prophet, did your prophet say like, or he said he will turn them into pigs and monkeys? Go ahead. Did he say like pigs and monkeys, or he said he will make them pigs and monkeys? What do you know what Allah meant by this? Well, it says he will turn know. them into. He said it will turn them into pigs and monkeys. It's in front of you. Okay, okay. Let's go uh, to situation. You go on the street. You walk, walk, and you see someone is behaving like a pig. Uh huh. He is not becoming pig right now in that moment, but he is behaving like a pig. Oh, uh, when when is going to happen? George, just come on. Uh, I can't talk with you. You are really a child, a boy. Like uh, okay, okay, okay. I I will little, tell you. I will tell you. Boy. I will tell you a story, and you help me if you agree with it or not. Huh? Why you hang up? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Okay, I will call him back, you know, because I think I hurt his feeling. It's okay, it's okay. Allah will bless you, brother. Bro, I don't have what to speak with you. you are don't don't speak to me. I'm not, I'm not going to force you. But I want to tell you. I want to tell you. I want to tell you. I want to tell you a story. I want to tell you. You left Islam. I want to tell you a story. And they understood. Believed your stupidness. Okay, oh, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna ask, I wanna tell you a story about my grandfather. Can I share with you? <laughs> you are the smart to believe that you have a God is going to make your penis in this. According to this guy, he went to the government and he changed his name officially to this. Have you ever heard? If someone will make a name like this, of this is his name in the ID, according to him, is Sultan C. Mahmid Hudayfa the Dai Muntayan. Oh boy, what happened to the UK? What a bunch of idiot! Are you sure this is page number one? Like, is the name is over now? Or there's more to come in the future. Is that a series? You said he changed his name. He went to the government, he changed his name. This is a name. Are you sure? Well, obviously, you are suffering from mental illness. Potato. Why you do all of this? Go to the government, tell them I want to change it to potato. And they will put in the picture a potato. This way, you can go to any airport in the world. Your ID can be used by all Muslims. You will share the same ID. Potatoes. If somebody told you who called you or gave you this name, tell them a Christian prince. Potato. Hmm? Potato, 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 potato. I like to touch the skin. I like to dip it in. So the prophet is a prophet who make prophecies which is hilarious. Like one of the other hadith says. If a man he raises his head before the Imam, Allah will make him his head the head of a donkey. 
This is what it says. Ra's Himar. I mean, your prophet is a specialist, and he's a specialist with the zoo. The Jews, they did fishing in Saturday. Allah made them pigs and monkeys. Not uh, after a thousand years. Right away, brother. And your prophet, he is not talking about in the day of judgment. He says, Allah will do that to them right away. Abu Hurair reported the Allah Messenger saying, Does he who raises his head before the Imam not fear that Allah may change his head to the head of a donkey? And that explain why Zakir Naik looked like that. I mean, it's proven scientifically. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to join us? Going back to our topic, the Kaaba. Look at this Kaaba. The Kaaba is supposedly chosen place by Allah. But this Kaaba is flooded every year by the sewage. How Allah He chosen such a location? And if the Kaaba is chosen by Allah as Muhammad and Muslims nickname. And then Allah noticed that this is the lowest spot in Mecca, all the sewage come to it. Can't Allah raise the Kaaba? Can't Allah push his little finger underneath the city of Mecca and raise all the city? Can't he? There's many mountains around the city. The same he rose those mountains, he can raise Mecca to protect the Kaaba. But as you see, the Kaaba is covered by the sewage. You see, Mecca does not have sewage. They have uh, something called Bayara. Bayara is the, you know, like a shithole, sorry to say. It's a shithole. Have no code, like now in the cities, etc. No, you dig a hole in the ground. And you cover, you put something in the top of it so people will not fail in the shed. And when... Like usually, because Mecca is not a is a is a dry land, it's a it's a desert, right? So usually those things never happen, you know. The ground always suck all the water because it's a desert. But when little rain happen in this city, in this town, Mecca will be flooded and the Kaaba will be in a horrible, horrible shape, and all the shit in the town will go down to the city and will go down to uh, to the uh, to the Kaaba. And this is always through history. You see, like when we're talking about those pictures here, this is when the cameras, you know, we have cameras now, right? Before it was more horrible. Look at this guy, he's even swimming. And this is actually is additional proof that there is no way the Kaaba is selected by God, whatever they call him, Allah, Balla, Allah. Obviously, true God will never, will never. If this is his house, this is his only house actually, on earth. The rest of the mosque are not is the house of Allah. It's just you know, it's just a place of worship. According to Muslim, this is the only house of Allah, which is chosen. Allah He sent forty uh, uh, thousand angels to build the Kaaba, which is very stupid. I mean, I mean, this is a bathroom, small room. You do not need thousands of angels to build it. And then according to Muhammad, this is how silly he is. Allah, when he sent uh, uh, down Adam and Eve from heaven, because according to Islam, Adam and Eve, they were not in heaven and earth, which is this, the story in the Bible. No, they were in the heaven in the sky. Heaven, it's not a garden. Heaven, it was in the sky. So Allah, he sent down uh, Adam and Eve. Adam first, he sent him to Sri Lanka. Let me show you. Grandmother, it is named. So Adam, let us see here. Ok, 
Give me a second. نزل في الهند. Look at this. So now the Muslim want to teach us about Adam, who they claim he is a prophet. Muhammad is a thief. All the stories, you know, he steals stories as usual. He steals stories, you know. And by the way, when Mufti Minki go live, Mufti Mink right now is live. Do you know how many people watching? 118. Look, look, I scheduled it 15, 20 minutes after I went live. And this is Mufti Mink just before me here. It says 118 people watching. Only. So now Mufti Mink is going to tell us where Adam, he came down. Just to show you another stupid stories Islam is based on. Where, uh, you know, where uh, Adam was sent down, Mufti Mink will tell us. Let us go here. Go, Mink, go. Alayhi salam nazala fil hind. He came down in what is known as the indo pak subcontinent, precisely Sri Lanka. There is a mount there known as Adam's Peak. If you go there, you will find it green and beautiful as though it is not from this earth, but it is. I'm not brother, trying to imply anything. Brother, brother, it's from earth, it's from earth, but it's really green, beautiful. So Adam where came? Adam came in Sri Lanka. Listen carefully. This is telling you that the roots of Islam is an Indian root. The Muslim believe that the first man is a is a person came from India. Their religion is not have nothing to do with us. It is from India. In fact, the Arab in the Arabian Peninsula, they are not, there's nothing called Arab. They, those are Indian. If you go check the Prince of Qatar, all of them, they look they look Indian. If you check the, the, the clothing of Yemen, you know, th those are those are those, those are from India. They wear a skirt, they were this they dress the same exactly the, the same as the, the Indian. The clothes you see now, this is later became their clothes. Read listen carefully. Find in the narration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa where he says that Adam alayhi salam nazala fil hind. He came down in what is known as the indo pak subcontinent, precisely Sri Lanka. There is a mount there known as Adam's Peak. If you go there, you will find it green and beautiful as beautiful. though it is not from this earth, but it is. I'm not trying to imply anything, but I'm just saying it is so beautiful, maybe because the Sri Lankans have kept it that way. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But it's a beautiful place. It is, it is said that there is a possibility that that is the place. We don't know for certain that that spot is the place, but roughly there. What about Hawa? Where did she come down? But we know for certainly that it is in Sri Lanka. But we don't know exactly where is Sri Lanka. Now, if you check the map of Sri Lanka, you will find that Sri Lanka is an island. Sri Lanka is an island. It's not connected to India. So how Adam did 40 times Hajj? 40 times. All the way to Mecca. If he was in Sri Lanka, he go backward, forward. So he go to Sri Lanka, he do Hajj, he come back. But how he can do it? Sri Lanka is an island. Remember, guys, the sound is bad. Is it, are you saying my sound is bad or his sound is bad? The sound is cutting off who? His sound? The video sound or my sound? <clears throat> maybe some areas, you know, the sound is, you know, maybe Shaitan, he did pee in your ears. His sound? No. Uh -huh. Okay, I will play what he said again. Maybe it will work now. Let us hope. Where he says that Adam alayhi salam nazala fil hind. He came down in what is known as the indo pak subcontinent. Precisely Sri Lanka. There is a mount there known as Adam's Peak. If you go there, 
you will find it green and beautiful as though it is not from this earth but it is i'm not trying to imply anything but i'm just saying it is so beautiful maybe because the sri lankans have kept it that way but it's a beautiful place it is it is said that there is a possibility that that is the place we don't know for certain that that spot is the place but roughly there what about hawa where did she come down in jidda where is jidda jidda is in the arabian peninsula in what we know today as saudi arabia and what is the meaning of jidda or jadda or judda it means the grandmother it is named after her <laughs> subhanallah subhanallah so guys i want to show you something very uh, did you hear it it's not i'm making not not making things up he just said that not me all right so adam he sent down in sri lanka and where eve sent down in jadda hold on hold on let us open the map of prophet gogol <laughs> You know, stupidity is amazing. It's beyond the imagination, you know. So, guys, look at this. I want you to focus with me. Focus, focus. Can you focus? I don't think you can focus. This is too much focusing. <laughs> so, I will bring the map here. All right. And... I uh, will try to open the program which we use to for a drawing. Where is the program? <clears throat> All right. So if you look with me here, let us zoom a little bit. Okay, this is Sri Lanka. I will zoom out so you can get an idea about the map. So this is Sri Lanka. And this is Saudi Arabia. Now let us draw. Let us make a line first. Around Sri Lanka. This is Sri Lanka. Let us make it smaller, it's too big very thick line all right let's make it thin okay let's make it red so this is the island of sri lanka here as you see and this is jeddah so between them there's an ocean, all this ocean. How Adam, he went all the way to Mecca. And why Allah, he sent Eve to Jeddah, which does not exist. Jeddah is a new city. <laughs> I mean, have you ever? <laughs> Look at this God. He sent Adam to Sri Lanka and he sent Eve to the desert in the middle of nowhere. How they communicate? Did the uh, Muslims, seriously, do you think at that time that Prophet Adam, he communicated with his wife using tech talk? I'm just, I mean, don't take me wrong. Do you think Okay, so now Adam is in Sri Lanka, which is an island in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Eve is in Jeddah, in Saudi Arabia. How Adam was able to meet his wife again? I will give you options. He went and he searched for her file in Facebook. He went to TikTok to see if Eve dancing with short skirt to strange men, even though he's the only man. How they met again? 
and how Adam was able to cross all the ocean to go to Saudi Arabia. Do he have like a very advanced ship, you know, like submarine or something? I mean, don't you think this story is so good? And not only that, according to Muhammad, Adam, he went to Mecca for 40 times for in 40 years. 40 years mean like 40 times. So in his lifespan, Adam, he went to Mecca 40 times in 40 years. How they met in Mecca? How, how, how they met in, uh, how, how we find Mecca? I mean, the guy just dropped him in Sri Lanka. And you know what? Which one is better for Allah to make his house there? Sri Lanka, which is so beautiful. We just heard uh, uh, Mufti Mink speaking about the description of how beautiful Sri Lanka. Mecca is very, very ugly, disgusting. Rocks, desert, extremely hot spiders snakes if you've been in Saudi Arabia there's nothing good there even though they try to promote it like in the media to say to you Saudi Arabia now became moderate you know Saudi Arabia is a dead land they say to you we are making Saudi Arabia green this is all is garbage in fact they are destroying their country they are sucking the water from under the ground which is preserved there through thousands of years and they are making the land more dead. Why he sent it down to this location? Hmm? There's many better locations. But the reason Muhammad, he mentioned uh, uh, Sri Lanka because this is where Islam is coming from. Bro, I challenge you to debate Mufti Mink if you will accept uh, Christianity and forsake Islam. If you win, if you win, I will accept Christianity and for. My friend, okay, I, I, I accept uh, to debate Mufti Mink. Shall I go right now to his uh, page? Okay, I will go to his page. This guy is asking me to debate Mufti Mink. Okay, I will go to Mufti Mink page right now, as we speak. Hmm? Do you remember last time when I went to Zakir Naik page, what happened? Zakir Naik, he had heart attack and he had popo in his, in his pant. And now, if we do the same, if we go to Zakir Naik page, uh, sorry, Mufti Mink page, as you see, he is online. So I'm going to click at his name. Just let me click first, just to be sure there is no advertising. Give me a second. When we click, I hear those advertising when they play. I will click at his name. Here we go. Ah, as was expecting, advertising. <coughs> All right, we will we will play his. Uh, mm, I don't see uh, like a chat running. <laughs> All right, now we skip the advertising. It's over. Uh, there is nobody there. I don't know. It says Iman Channel Production. I see nobody. Did they finish? I don't know. Live Day 5, Mufti Ming, the divine book of Al Quran, but I don't see Mufti Ming. Anyway, uh, tell Mufti Ming, you know, potato, uh, if he dare. Well, Christian Prince is always here. Anytime I will come to him. You do not need even to call me. Just give me your Skype or any method to, to call and I will be happy. But as you see, the page is uh, like uh, refreshing. I don't know, maybe the, the video is not working. Let me refresh again. I don't know. It's not working. There's nothing. I just see a Iman channel production. 
And as you see, this is Mufti Mink page. You know, we are in the right page. 4.9 million uh, subscribers. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I never said no to debate anyone. And actually, uh, the more we debate them, the more we demolish Islam. You know, and this is why actually they refuse to debate us. It's the opposite. It's not us who refuse. Muslims, they will refuse to debate someone only if they knew that he would demolish them. When you see a Muslim line up to debate somebody, it means he is not really going to do good. They study the person carefully. That's why you see Shabir Ali, Mimi Hijab, etc. They like they don't mind to debate David Wood many times. You know, like Shabir Ali, he debated maybe David Wood maybe 20 times, maybe more. But he will not dare to debate me once. So they study the case carefully. If the person, he will demolish them, they will never even get close to him. If the person, he, you know, uh, we can manipulate the speech in two seconds with him, like he liked to speak about philosophy, eh, that's perfect. Mention to him philosophy, they forgot even the topic. What was the topic? Just say philosophy. They knew everyone who they speak to, what is his weakness, and where, let us say, his weak uh, ability. Some they get intimidated when Muslims are debating them. So they try to intimidate you. Uh, this is why when they debate the Muslim, they don't do good. After the Muslim, they go, he, you know, he, he make videos, he refute the guy. Where have you been when you were debating the potato? Now you want to make a video? Muslims always, they choose carefully. Let us say, who is going to be their victim? Not the one who will win. If they knew that you are very good in debate and you have a strong knowledge, they will never debate you. And the proof is in the front of you. I will go. My Skype is open. Who dare? They don't. Give me Zachary Naik a Skype. I will call him right now. Right now, not, not, not tomorrow. Immediately. Mimi Hijab, I called him. The coward, he hang up on me six, seven times. He have five Muslims. He did not let me ask questions. You remember? They were very much intimidated. And they prepared themselves supposedly to trap me. Did you say that? Hang up on him. <laughs> Even with all the plan they did, we laugh at them. <clears throat> you know, why Mimi Hijab, he debated David Wood. But with me, he did not dare to debate. Why they go and they cut videotapes of uh, uh, audio I said and they played them for me because they don't want to debate me. They cannot debate me. They knew. Read for us the Quran. They want to examine me if I know how to read. <laughs> I said to him, you stupid. Isn't it? This is my voice you just played. This is me reading the Quran. What's the problem? <laughs> so they always, they always, they choose carefully who they will debate. If they knew that you are a person who will beat them with no mercy, they will never get close to you. If they knew that they can play around with you, especially if you don't speak Arabic. This is number one point, actually. Not knowing Arabic is a big point. However, it's not enough to know Arabic to be a debater because there's a huge difference between just knowing a language and having some headlines about religion from someone he had the knowledge and he had the ability to refute liars. Like, you know, if you notice, when this guy, he called me, the one who claimed he wanted to debate me official, <clears throat> he could not answer anything, even though I was trying not to ask him a question. I asked him to give me a prophecy. You know, give me a prophecy. He could not. He don't even know how to find a verse in the Quran. But then when we quote for him, he's a prophet saying, the one who uh, listen to music and uh, drink uh, alcohol, Allah will make his, uh, he will make him uh, a pig and a monkey. He start adding things that's not there, saying like, like a monkey. No, he says he will turn them into monkeys. And the Quran mentioned that Allah, he made the Jews for fishing in Saturday, pigs and monkeys, literally. <clears throat> Uh, Christian Prince voice 
and de delicate is calming. Focus with me in what I say, not in my voice, please. All right. You made me read your sentence for nothing. Don't put my name next to something is not important. Uh, so the Mohammedan, they cannot really answer anything. Look at this story. Like Adam, he came in Sri Lanka. How in the world anyone would believe in such a stupid thing? And how Adam, he went all the way to Mecca. 40 times. When Sri Lanka is just an island. And how in the world anyone would believe that Adam, who he went down in, in, in Sri Lanka, and Eve went down in Saudi Arabia. And how in the world they met again? How they met again? So any question you ask about this garbage cult, the Muslim will be in trouble. But usually Christians do not know how, where it's written, how to say, where to say, where we can find it. They don't you know, like educate themselves about the garbage of Muhammad. And then the Muslim, they will they will try you. They test you first. If they notice that you are a person who have knowledge, they have to be careful. They will study you more. The more your knowledge is strong, the more they will stay away from you. If your knowledge about the Bible is strong, that is okay for them. Because as long as you don't attack Muhammad and his religion, they are fine. Oh, he defend the Bible, no problem. He was able to refute me about the Bible. But still, I can say to him, your book is corrupt anyway. The problem solved but if he knew the Quran very well if he knew all the garbage of our Prophet very well how we can refute him <clears throat> how we can refute him we cannot and here we go my Skype is open who is a Muslim he claimed to have a beard long beard short beard we take all kind of beard What do you think? There is a group of Christians from Indonesia. They keep asking me to join them in Zoom. And you know, guys, I don't really like to go anywhere, right? I tried it before, and I get disappointed. Christians do not know how to manage any conversation. Do you remember the group of uh, Filipinos who asked me to debate a, a group of Muslims in Philippines? Who remember? I have a private meeting with them in private. I told them, listen, don't tell the Abduls in, 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 in Philippines, who they are sheikhs supposedly, don't tell them that you bring Christian prince. You promised me. They said, yeah, yeah, brother, yeah, brother, brother, yeah, okay, wonderful. So now we agree that just tell them we will debate you in such a day. Don't mention my name. Never say anything. Guess what? They went and they put a big thumbnail in the in the YouTube. Christian Prince versus like, what the heck? And then those guys, when they call, they are trembling. They don't want to debate. They are just looking for any excuse to run. Do you remember it? This is why I don't go and join other groups. They get disappointed. You know, I told them, don't tell them. They will run away. They will not debate us. And it's not only they, they, they told them. I mean, they, they, put, they, put, they, they put a picture of a guy. I don't know who's he. Supposedly, I don't know. He sort of looks so good, by the way. I, I said, oh, thanks to Allah. Look, I look so handsome now in Philippines. Whoa, this is me. Wow, man, what happened? I went to the mirror right away. I said, what happened? How come the guy there is not me? I mean, he don't even look close. What the heck? This is not even fair. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> they put a picture of a guy, Christian Prince, and they invite everybody, and the Abdul came, and they were made any excuse to run away, and there is no debate. Immediately, it did not even take two seconds.
So when, you know, when people, they invite me, I don't trust their administration. You know, you need, it, 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 like the, the topic we do here, you need to be strong, firm, uh, have a strong uh, personality. Uh, not to, you, know, you cannot, you cannot be a potato in this, in, in this topic. They are so soft. They don't fit for the topic. <laughs> Someone saying, if a Christian prince is a bravely, why he hide himself? First of all, who said to you, I'm hiding myself? Well, hiding from you? What you can do to me? If there is any of you dare even to get close to me, let me know. What about you? Are you hiding yourself from me? If you are a man, come to me and kill me if you can. I'm not hiding myself. Why I want to show? Here we go. There's women. They are insulting Islam in YouTube, in TikTok, everywhere. I don't like to be in camera. That's my, per you know, my personal choice. You are just an idiot. Why I want to show myself? What for? People are here to listen to my what I say, not to to see me. And as you see, I'm a person who show reference. We do study here, read a study. We are not making speeches. So when you say hiding himself, it's you Muslims hiding yourself. Isn't it you Hamas is under the ground right now as we speak? Who's hiding himself? Rats. I'm not hiding anywhere. In fact, in the day before the Christmas, I was going to do a big, big, a huge seminar, but I was sick. You remember, guys, I got sick. I have a very bad flu. I could not go. I go. I do seminar around the world. Who is hiding himself? I did a seminar in the in, in the heart of the terrorism of ISIS in Philippines. Do you remember the city of Marawi? I went all the way there and I did a seminar there and there was Muslims. Who hide himself? But I'm not a person who's seeking publicity. There are some people, they worship to put their pictures in screen and people's, you know. For me, the first thing I say, don't, no camera. Go ask any church. But you cannot control people. People, they can have phones. People, they can take pictures of you. People, they can record. But I do it because I'm not seeking publicity. If somebody record my seminar and post it somewhere, well, he did it. It's, I did not seek it, you know. But there is people, they love to be famous. I am not here to be famous. I'm here to serve the Lord. And I don't like cameras. <clears throat> as simple as that. You like cameras, maybe, you know, you are 60 and you know it. And uh, I thought even the camera is haram, brother. <laughs> I find it very funny when the Muslim talk about hiding. Saddam Hussein was hiding in a hole. Uh, uh, Osama bin Laden, he was hiding in a room with, with porno tapes and two goats and one chicken. Al Zawahri, he was hiding. Uh, Al Baghdadi, you know, they chase him by a dog. I mean, look who's talking about hiding. Hassan Nasrullah. The head of Hezbollah, he have 100,000 fighters. He did not see the sun for the last 25 years. Never, never walk in the street, guys. He never walk in the street for the last 25 years. And he have 100,000 fighters. Yet, he don't dare to walk in the street. Am I lying? We just heard the news a few hours ago. Israel, they killed a leader of Hamas in the heart of the south uh, of, of Beirut. Actually, I post a video about it. They hit the guy in his ass in the heart of Hezbollah territory, and many members of Hezbollah got killed with him. Hmm. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to join us? Anyone? <clears throat> Where is your proof? Akbar means sun, and Allah Akbar mean moon and sun. Well, it's in the Quran, isn't it? Did you watch my video, previous video? Isn't it 
Abraham, supposedly according to Muhammad. When he saw the son, he said, this is my Lord, this is Akbar. Hmm? Why he called the son Akbar? Why he did not call? Okay, he saw first the moon. He saw the star first. He saw the moon. Why he didn't say, oh, this is, I, I'm not going to worship this because this is Akbar. Then when he saw the second one, he said, oh, this is Akbar. No, he did not do that. When he saw the sun, he says, Hada Rabbi, Hada Akbar. Do you see it? Chapter 6, verse number 78. قال, هذا ربي, هذا أكبر. When he saw the sun coming up, he says, this is my God. This is Akbar. Not the greatest. Well, the Muslim, when they say Allah, they don't say Allah Akbar. They say Allahu Akbar. Who is a letter which mean and Allahu Akbar Allah and Akbar one God same time it's not Allah as Allah it is Lah Al Lah God Lah and Akbar do we have any Muhammadan And you know what the funny is, uh, this is how stupid Muhammad is. If you read the verse after it, it says, verse number 79, it says that uh, uh, Abraham, he face his, he, he direct his face to the sky and to the earth. And then he says, Hanifan. If you ask the Muslim, what Hanif mean? He Muslims, who want to tell us what Hanif mean? They say to you that he is monotheist, but Hanifan in the Aramaic language means he's a kafir. He's an infidel, he's a pagan. The stupid Muhammad do not know what Hanif means. Hanif does not mean monotheist. Hanif is the opposite. Hanif is a pagan. If you read the story of uh, Abraham, which is the Muslims, they have it. It's a very funny story. Very, It's not even good for kids. <laughs> Do we have any Muslim? He is a Hanif here from the black stone kissing religion. So on one hand, they try to, you know, Islam came to fix the Bible. What fixed the Bible? You have zero ethic. You have zero ethic. Islam is the religion of everything wrong, everything gone wrong, everything. How we can fix ethic with someone? The prophet himself is a child molester. I mean, the start of his life is wrong. Did I mention to you before, and I'm sure many of you heard it, that Muhammad, when he married Khadija, anyone remember what he did? Somebody help me. What Muhammad he married, in what he did in order to marry Khadija? You know what he did, right? He made the father drunk. This is the prophet, the best of mankind. The Muslim, they say to you, he was, a, you know, he was well known. Uh, his name is a Sadiq al Amin, which means the 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 truth, the teller, the trustworthy. And then we find that Khadija and Muhammad. They made the father of Khadija drunk. And they lied to him when he woke up in the morning. They changed his clothing. They changed the clothing of the father. So when he woke up, they will tell him, oh, he said, why am I wearing those clothes? What happened? You know, like all of us, you know, unless you are like me, you don't have too many different clothing. Like when you have an occasion, you wear a suit, you wear some expensive clothing. 
the same those Arab. There's a clause for work. There's a clause for certain occasion. So when he was asleep, she changed his clothing. And she dressed him the most expensive clothes he have. And not only that, it says in order to do that, she made him drunk. She made him drunk. He woke up in the morning. He said, why am I wearing those clothes? She said, oh, you do not know what you did yesterday. She said, he said, what? What I did? She said, yesterday you married me to Muhammad. He said, no, I did not. She said, do you want me to tell everybody in town that my father was drunk and he was not aware what he's doing? She blackmailed her father. The guy, he took his sword. He want to go and kill Muhammad. He knew. They planned against him. This is Islam. And this is Muhammad. The wife of Muhammad, the first wife and Muhammad, they did conspiracy, blackmailing, fabricating, lying, and using alcohol, which is supposedly from shaitan. Read with me. This is the book of Musnad, Musnad uh, uh, Al-Imam Ahmad. I will use Google Translation just to show you the reference first before we translate to English. Value number one, page number three, twelve. Remember the numbers. I will give you the link anyway. Translate to Google to to English. Musnad Imam Ahmad. Value number one, page number. Three one two, hadith number two eight four six, and this is authentic. And now let's read what she did with her beautiful prophet Muhammad. From the authority, from the authority, from the authority, from 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 the prophet mentioned that Khadija and her father wanted to marry him. Khadija, she wanted to marry. She wanted to marry Muhammad. The translation is not coming accurate. So she prepared food and drank, and she called her father and a group of Quraysh, and they ate and drank until they they are way, they became very drunk. Do you see it? Do you see it? And then Khadija, she said to her father, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, he proposed to me. So he married him, so married him to me. So now the, the father is drunk. Guys, can you believe it? She made her father, uh, is, is the text coming all of it? Or it's, uh, let, let me, hold on. I think it's not coming. The ratio is not good. Let me do this. Can you read it? Is it coming like right in the screen for you? Or it is uh, the way, okay, hold on. Let's see now. What about now? Is it fine or is still not able to see the whole text? I think now you can see it. So she made her father drunk, totally drunk, until they are like almost fainting. And look what she said to him. Muhammad, he proposed to me. So married me to him. So he married him to her. He's drunk. Oh, oh God, uh, you know. This is what the story is saying. And to prove that he did not marry her, look what happened. If, she, if he married her, why she is taking off his clothes? So I took off. So she took off his, his clothing. And she changed it. When he was drunk and he you know he, he just you know passed passed out then he woke up and he saw that he was well dressed 
he's wearing his suit. So he said, well, what is this? Why am I wearing this? She said, okay, hold on. Don't you remember what you did? You married me to Muhammad yesterday. He said, I will marry you to this guy? The orphan boy? I swear by, you know, the, the translation is not coming correct. It says, not because of my age. He says, which means I swear by my life, not my age. I swear by my life. I will never do that. Then Khadija said, aren't you ashamed of yourself? You want, you know, to look for yourself in the front of Quraysh? Shall I tell them that you were drunk and you did not know what you are saying? She blackmailed her father. So the first marriage of Muhammad was a fraud. And the purpose of it is a fraud. He made them drunk. Okay, we have a Muslim trying to contact us. I'm assuming he's from Pakistan. <laughs> Hello? 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 How are you doing, my friend? You are a Muslim from Pakistan? Hello? Yes. Okay, I hear you. Go ahead. What do you want to say to us? Hello? Hello? Yeah. Hi. Yeah, is that yes. you like in the behind the microphone? You have a microphone there. Do you want to put your camera on? I saw your yes. camera. Are you a shake? This guy is a shake. He have a microphone. I saw him in the camera. He have a studio. He have a microphone. Look, what happened? Why you hang up? That's a good fish. What? What? What the heck? Where, where do you go? Let me call him back. I'm telling you, he have a studio. He have a microphone. He's wearing a hat. The guy is ready. This is official. Let's call him again. We will not lose this fish. No. It says Abdul is unavailable. Like, what the heck? He was available a second ago. What do you mean Abdul? And, and, and when I called him Abdul, he get upset. Abdul is unavailable. Let us call him again. What do you mean? You were here a second ago. What happened? Where are you going? Let us call him again. Abdul is unavailable. I don't know what happened. He said he is busy. He will call me later. <laughs> Too bad I don't have his camera on to show you. The guy you have in a studio. I mean, you have like a big office and you know microphone. Yeah, and look, he's saying to me he's a sheik. I'm telling you. He's, he's a sheikh. He just told me, like, actually, yeah, he's wearing, uh, you know, the hat. He have a microphone. He was ready to, uh, man, I better, guys, I better go. I mean, this guy, if he call me, he will demolish me. He's a real Abdul. This is number one. Uh, and he have all the, uh, you know, equipment. I mean, ready to go. Yeah, look, he, he, he texts me. He says, I'm sheikh. And since he mentioned that, I'm shaking now. I'm telling you, things is messed up. Look, what? He's what? You are shake? Busy, I will call you later. I am shake. That's deep. What I would do now? 
Hey guys, I need your uh, I need your advice. Should I stay or leave? Don't you think this shake if you call me and I am here, I will be in trouble. And look, by the way, it says he is agreeing, so which means he is he is uh, he is there. You know, he's there. It's not like uh, offline. It says green. It says active now. I know. I need I need help. Let me get the vitamin. I need to get some uh, camel urine, mix it with uh, uh, <coughs> uh, some uh, uh, ajwa, seven ajwa. You know, we need to eat seven ajwa to you know to ready to be ready. Oh boy, let us hope that he will call me back. Okay, yeah, my friend, call me back as soon as you finish your business. Well, I mean, you are shake, you are busy with what? Marina girl, she is six years old, or 54 years old husband. Okay, call me. Let us call and tell him. Maybe he noticed that I'm a Christian prince, so he said to himself, what the heck? That's a big mistake. No. I'll give you the link. Okay, sorry, sorry. Let me give you the link. Okay, I will give you the link. I will give you the link. No worry. <clears throat> I need to shorten it first because uh, those links have Arabic in the address, so they don't go through Google. Uh, link shortener. All right, and now we post the link. All right, bingo. All right, now we post the link for you. Let me know if it's working, please. And don't forget to save it. Don't ask me again. Don't send me a PM in a message in Patreon. Is the link working? Let me know, please. You should see the same thing. For sure, you will see it in Arabic. Be sure to open it in Google browser so you can uh, choose translate. Barely you can see the... Okay, I posted the link anyway. I mean, you have the link. You have the link now. You can open it and you can translate in your phone, in your computer, whatever you have. <clears throat> but do you see how, how this religion is so stupid? It's how false it is. The guy, he is a prophet of God. His first marriage based on alcohol and cheating and lying. How Muhammad accepts such a, such a thing? His, that means his marriage is not valid. Because those Arab. You know, those by the way, the women, she cannot go and just get married like, like this. That's why she is trying to convince her father. What Muhammad and Khadija they do? They use alcohol to make the father drunk. And they lie to him. He did not marry her. He want to kill Muhammad for that. He want to wage war on Muhammad. And then they say to you that Muhammad was so good to the point everybody in the town want to marry him to his daughter. Well, obviously, this is not what happened. If he is so good and everybody in town want to marry him to his daughter, why she have to blackmail her father and make him drunk? You know, just the guy, he come, he asks for the hand. The father will be so happy and proud. And that's it. And this is the one they call him, the trustworthy. And then the story of the trustworthy continue. What about Muhammad, doing, uh, his wife doing striptease? How many of you knows the story about the striptease? Give me one if you know the story, if you heard it from me before. Give me two if you did not hear the story of striptease. All of us will like the striptease. If I'm married, huh. I will make her do striptease from the morning until the second day. 
All of you did not. Okay, but I I warn you, I'm not going to show you pictures. <laughs> I will show you the story only. <laughs> All right, let me let me find the story of the striptease. According to the story, and you know the Muslim, they are they are uh, proud about it. The angel Jibreel, he come to Muhammad, and he sit in the corner of the bedroom of Muhammad, but he don't talk. He sit in the corner. And he told uh, his wife Khadija about it. He told her, I see somebody in the, in, the, in, the, in the corner. So Khadija, she said, okay, listen, Khabibi, next time you see this person in the corner, let me know. And again, here we go. This is the reference. This is the book of Asira Nabawiyah Ibn Hisham, volume number one. Page number 239. As you see, everything we show you come with the reference and evidence. We don't make things up. And it's their books. And this is hadith number, page number, sorry, 239. Remember that. And now we will use Google Translation to help you. You know, I mean, Google Translation is not best, but what we can do. So again, biography of a prophet Muhammad. Ibn Hisham. Do you see the name? The author? Everything is there. Very number one, page number 239. Wonderful. Everything looked good. And let us move this here a little bit. Okay. From the authority of Khadija. The authority. Look, you see, you see how heavy duty does. Authority, brother. Authority. Hmm. May Allah be pleased with her that she said, to the messenger, may Allah be pleased with him. Oh cousin, can you tell me about the friend you see? He's a friend. There is a friend. He comes sit in the corner. Hmm? Who come to you? If he come to you, tell me, tell me, okay. So Jibreel, he come like a monkey, and he sit in the corner of the room and he don't talk. And Muhammad now is worried because he can see him, Khadija, she cannot. He said yes. She said, okay, if he come to you, tell me about it. Can you read with me? If you see him, if he come to you, tell me about it. Then Jibreel, he come. Peace be upon him. He come to him. As he used to do, which means he sat in the corner like a monkey. And then the messenger of Allah, he told Khadija, 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 Khadija. He's there. I see him. But remember, Khadija cannot see him. Only Muhammad can see him, brother. And then the messenger of Allah, Allah bless him. He said, Khadija, Khadija, this is Zabriel who has come to me. Look how stupid the story. How they say that the guy, Muhammad, do not know that this is Jibreel or not. And why he is saying this is Jibreel? Did you see our silly story? Because the whole point is he do not know who is this guy. But now in the story saying, this is Jibreel. <laughs> so this is Jibreel has come to me. She said, get up, get up, get up, my cousin, get up. My cousin, you know, the Arab, uh, because usually they marry from their cousins, you know, but he's not really cousin. So when they get married, they call, she called the husband cousin usually. Get up, get up, cousin, and sit on my left thigh, oh boy. I want to be a prophet. Look, what's wrong with this website? Keep popping those things. So, guys, listen. Khadija now, she want to prove to her husband. Oh, each time I highlight this stupid thing, let me use the, 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 the... There's something wrong with this website. Okay. <clears throat> we will use the marker. Excuse me. What we can do, Scooby Scooby Doo. Da, 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 da. Okay, now it's not going to pop up. So she said, okay, 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 
get up, get up, my cousin, and sit on my left thigh. You know, guys, this is one of the things made me think twice about not to get married. Imagine you are a growing man. <laughs> And then your wife now she is treating you like a monkey or like an like an idiot or like a kid. Okay, honey, sit here, here in my left eye. So imagine Muhammad now, the prophet of God. He stood up and he sat on her left thigh. Where? On the left thigh. Oh boy, I can imagine it. That's a nice uh, the you know, usually women they sit in the in the in the legs of the man, not the opposite. The guy sitting in the thigh of the woman. I mean, are you sure? I mean, it shouldn't be the opposite. Who's more heavy? Ah, Khadija is so big and beautiful. Yeah, and Muhammad is so small, shrinky, shrinky. So anyway, the Prophet of Allah he sat in her thigh as she commanded. So the Messenger of Allah, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, brother. He sat on her. <laughs> I love Google translation. <laughs> and look now at the conversation. She said, do you see him? That's deep. That's so deep. Look at the investigation now. Khadija, she is doing investigation. She's doing an investigation now. Do you see him? And guess what now? Muhammad, he said, yes. That is even more deep. So imagine this, brother and sisters. With your breath. First of all, talk about the story with respect. I'm just, uh, I mean, I cannot hold myself from laughing. What the heck is that? With your breath. First of all, there's nothing wrong between us wife okay well i know that's our husband and wife but now it's about god i mean the, the, he's a prophet she's not a prophet how the prophet do not know if this is an angel or not but the wife now trying to find out by what doing what sit on my thigh what the thigh would do get her breath first of all you are stupid secondly i will not tell you the answer for this question Wait. so what now get her breath read the story and stop making comment this is not a football game Muhammad. Oh, okay. I, I guess you are right. I mean, we should show some fart set. I mean, respect. Exactly. Okay. So he said, yes. So which means he still see the angel. Muhammad in trouble. Still he see the angel. Khadija now is disappointed. She thought the angel would go. He did not. She said then, turn around. Are you from Philippines? If you go in the Philippines, some areas, they... They, like they, they make like the letter R, like 44 pesos. So turn around, okay, and sit on my right thigh. Things getting more complicated. What, what, what? Turn around. That's so deep. <laughs> And sit on my right thigh. Look, this guy's this is need some studies. Excuse me, excuse me. Most of you are ignorant in biology and the importance of biology. And today it's time for me, the Arab guy, to text you to teach you about biology. So from the biology like aspect of uh, point of a view, if you sit in the left thigh. It's not enough. You have to make a balance, a balance and study. Like you can, you don't study the right wing of the of the fly without studying the left wing. It's a wingy study. So now she told him to move to the right thigh. Why the right thigh? Because simply he already tried the left thigh and nothing happened. Idiot. So it's very normal, logical. That is time for us now to try the right tie. When we go to the grocery store, 
do you ask the guy to give you the right thigh of the chicken? No. You give him, give me a thigh. You don't know if she was left, right, you know. So he give you left, right, left, right, left, right. This way you have a balance in your stomach because if you eat only the left thigh, you will have a misbalance. You don't want to have a misbalance in your stomach. You can have Miss uh, Beauty Queen, Miss uh, whatever, but misbalance, you know, no. In stomach, I'm impossible. I hope you like the, the logic. We are teaching you logic. We, by the way, we are the Arab. We are the first one who come with the, the word logic in the world. Yeah, yeah. You know, our uh, uh, the great and and, and sister. Uh, do you know why they call them a great ancestor? Because simply, Anne, my grand 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 grandfather, his name is Anne. He have a sister. So like, you know, the grand grand ancestor. Okay. So, uh, you know, they are the one who taught us this wisdom about Thai. So if somebody see an angel, you are not sure he's an angel or maybe he's a demon or he's a shaitan. What do you do? The thigh method is the first one. Thigh never fail. Never, never. Try it. Okay, how many of you now, be honest with me, how many of you is sitting on the thigh of his, his wife? <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do that at home. Your wife, she will hit you. I'm not responsible for what's going to happen. Imagine you go to your wife, you say to her, uh, listen, I see someone in the corner. Huh, really? Yeah, yeah, there. Uh, okay, but I don't see anyone. Okay, that's what I'm telling you. Now, I have to sit on your thigh. However, if you are dirty-minded, you can switch the method. You can say to her, you have to sit on my thigh. <laughs> I think this is more profitable from the first method. Like, what you will get if you sit on her thigh? Nothing. But if she sat on your thigh, oh boy. Okay, you will thank me later. You will thank me later. Just try it. <laughs> Only with your wife, not with, the, not with the neighbor. Hello? Be careful. Don't do that at home. Disclaimer, disclaimer. <laughs> so now she said to him, turn around and sit on my right thigh. She said to the messenger of Allah, look at the coming question. I mean, things are getting complicated, brother. Brother and sister, this is very serious. We are about to find out if this is from God or not. This is super serious. Don't tell this to Donald Trump. He will try it in the election. I'm telling you. So she said to him, after he moved to the right thigh, he turned and said, he, he said in her right thigh, and she said, do you see him? Just imagine the moment and the timing and the location and the position and the physical and the physiology and the philosophy behind this that's deep do you see him she said he said yes yes i see him i see him i see him he's still there yes yes the vision now oh boy after trying the left thigh and the right thigh still he see him something is missing the trick is not working so she continued trick, and then she turned. She said, "Turn and sit on my lap, oh boy, oh mommy, oh mommy, mommy lap, oh mommy lap, oh mommy, oh mommy, mommy blue, that is really blue, oh mommy." The top one, sit on my lap. May Allah love you, Muhammad. Labo, labo. What the? Now we know that we, the Arab, we are the first one who come with the laboratory. Simply, she was practicing science in her laboratory, which is her legs and her lap. And this is where the first word in the word lap came from. Arab. We are Arab, you know. It's a front of you. I mean, you show it to them and still they deny it because they are kuffar and they hate us, uh, you know, they are racist. I know that they are racist, you know, you know it, you know, free Palestine, okay? Uh, you know the thing? So uh, 
she you know she is the one who come with the word lab and uh, this is where the those uh, crazy uh, western nun, western nun from uh, uh, texas nun, they took the word laboratory you know and they made the uh, like uh, the you know the king it's called fasa nasa na, 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 yeah na, na something you know so and then she said to the messenger grant him peace uh, he turned and he sat in her lap i didn't know what to say i don't know how she looked like to say i wish i was there in his position but i think i would pass just for the sake of safety so he turned and he sat in her lap and look here muhammad is like a baby i mean he obey the wife she say right thigh he said right thigh she say left thigh he said left thigh he never say no he never said why he never questioned what the heck <laughs> i mean do you see how cute he is the wife she said here he said here move there move there the guy don't even say why he's so 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 obedient okay so now he sat in her lap and she said and this is the one million dollar question do you see him do you and now the answer is coming yes oh boy method number three is not working he is still there so left eye did not work right eye did not work Muhammad now in the top of her mm, did not work. So she said, mm. she said, she took off her clothing. She getting strapped these. And he is sitting in the top of her. She is taking off uh, the boobs are coming. And you know, the whole like the whole, you know, the things in the trunk, you know, everything in the trunk is out now. And then when she took everything off, she said to Muhammad, while he is sitting on her lap, she said to him, <clears throat> do you see him? He said, no. Wow. The miracle happened. The Zabril is gone. She said, now the conclusion she said oh cousin stand firm and give good news by allah this is an angel not the devil <laughs> listen carefully we have to be ser serious here. This is the first time ever a scientific message from him from God, scientific uh, way, is discovered to be from God. I want to debate a Christian versus Islam. The, the Sheikh is calling me again. Hold on. He's texting me. Let us call him. Hello. Hello. Uh, yes, my friend. So you are a sheikh. Yes. Yeah. All right. I I saw your camera. You have like a studio, a microphone, etc. Is that really you or somebody else? It's me. Okay, I you want to show, wanna show no. yourself in camera again? No. So why you open the camera then? What happened? Uh -huh. we will hang up again <laughs> oh boy you know like look what he's asking me you know arabic is scared now i have no idea what arabic i know nothing
Ni hang up. You see how I'm not lucky? If I am, you know, those uh, blue eyes American who know nothing about Islam, they will be lined up to call you. Here, uh, he asked me, you know Arabic? Obviously, this guy is not, he, he have no idea where he's going, you know. Do you have insurance, Abdul Hamid? I, I advise you to buy insurance before you call me. <laughs> you might lose something, my friend. Oh, boy. But anyway, brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, police upon him. He was able, with the help of his wife Khadija, to discover if this is an angel from God or not. Here you notice why it's very important to have a woman. She have nice thigh, left thigh, right thigh, nice lap, and you need to sit on the top of her lap every day. And she need to take off her bra. It's very important. So if we see something in the room, and we want to know if it's the shaitan or it is from God. This is what you do. Now, how many of you is going to ask his wife? Okay, not okay. Don't do that at home, please. Don't do that at home. Otherwise, you will make more babies tonight. <laughs> What the heck is this, Muhammad? This is religion? Are you serious? If this is religion, what is a stupidity? This is how your prophet discover. Look, actually, you know what? Do you know what the title of this story? Read carefully with me. The test of Khadija as a proof of revelation. That's deep. Do you see how Khadija, she tested the proof of revelation? There's nobody in the world come with such a method, scientifically proven by Allah. How Khadija, she knew those techniques? How many men she asked them to do that before? Huh? This is how she tested if he is an angel or not. You know, we have. <laughs> oh boy, like a, a person like me who is not married, how I'm going to test now? What I would do? Huh? We Muslims, how the wife she find out that this is the way to test the husband? This is how she proved that her husband is a prophet of Allah. That's so deep. What do you mean gross? You say that because you are single and you don't have anyone to do the test with. If you have a beautiful wife, you will do this test every day. Every day you say to your wife, listen, hey honey, I see somebody in the corner. Right away she will say to you, uh -huh. you are listening to Christian brains. This is what we got from listening to this guy. He is telling, he is teaching you how to be a pervert. <laughs> no, no, honey, also what pervert? I'm your husband. Hello. Yeah, but you are doing the lies about what you see now, so you can, you know, do those things, huh? No, no, I'm not. I did not learn that from a Christian prince. I don't know. I did not. I did not. No, I did not. I'm telling you. Are you sure? No, I'm. Sure. I'm very sure. I'm telling you. In fact, I did not watch Christian Prince video since yesterday. <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> hey Muslims, this is your religion? This is really a religion? Oh boy. Oh boy. Can you contact Muslim Lantam? I don't know who is this guy. Give me, give me his guy. I will call him. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Can you contact this guy and that guy? Just give me the, you know, uh, uh, ask them to call me or give me their Skype. I will call them. Let us see how good they are. They will end French fries. Uh,
Anyway, as you see, you know, when they claim that this is a religion from God, this is just a scam. It's just a collection of stupid story of a false man who he claimed to be a prophet. I mean, who is a prophet in the world when I do this? What, what is this? The prophet himself, he do not know what he is seeing, and the wife, she is doing striptease, using her lap and her private part and her boobs to prove that this is an angel. According to Muslim, they say, oh, because if it's a shaitan, he will stay to watch porn. Really? Did this angel did that <laughs> did that to any of the prophet before? So shaitan he liked to watch porn. Angel don't. <sighs> That's deep. I mean, the guy is going to his bedroom. What he what he's doing there? Can't he wait for him outside? Is it halal for the angel to go to the bedroom where the husband and the wife do boom boom? Hmm? And now the angel did not get shy when he when she when he sat in her left thigh. And when he sat in her right thigh, and then he sat in the top of her, is it obvious they are going to have sex? He got shy only when she take off her clothes or he run away because she looks scary. Just a stupid, you know, garbage in, garbage out. <clears throat> All right. Anyway, I think we have enough for today. Did we have a good time? I hope so. Uh, I will see if uh, tomorrow I can go live, you know. Uh, if not, uh, if you are not married, I advise you not to think about this story too much. However, if you are married and you like to practice it, you better follow the script as Khadija did exactly. Be careful, brother. Disclaimer, I don't want you to get any injury. <laughs> And remember, some wives, they lose patience. So <clears throat> before you tell them that you see somebody in the corner, be sure they are not using or watching my videos. Otherwise, they will get you busted, number one. Number two, don't make it like it is it just to find out. Make it just like it's so important, like it's a matter of death and life, you know? like. I see somebody in the corner, really. He said, you know, like scared the hell of her, you know. And then uh, she will not even question too much your stupidity and like you are getting horny, you know, obviously. Uh, and they try, don't do it exactly as Khadija. Try to do the opposite. What about you tell her to sit in your left thigh first? <laughs> don't sit in her left. I mean, this is stupid. You are the man. You sit in the top of the women's thigh. That's stupid. You look like a kid. I mean, Muhammad Mary Khadija, she is in the age of his mom. That's why we understand what's happening. But I don't think you are marrying a woman. She is 30 years older. So try to switch the script a little, the script a little bit. Tell her to sit in the top of your left thigh. And then you ask her, do you see him? She will say no. Because if you do that, by the way, you can continue the game until tomorrow. Moving here, moving there. Do you see him? <laughs> Lord have mercy. What you know? What I do to myself sometimes? I mean, why even study this garbage religion? From everything in the world, I could not find something beside this. This, you know, people they study biology, history, technology. What I did, I went to university and I registered Islamic Sharia law, and this is what we got: the legs of Khadija and the nipples of Aisha and the clitoris of Allah. Oh boy. Anyway, if you are a Muslim and you don't like the way I talk, because I heard Muslims saying, Christian Prince, he use a very bad language. Brother, shall I say to you what the prophet say? Go and bite the penis of your father. I mean, have you ever heard of a prophet he says such a nice language? Go and bite the penis of your father. What if the guy he did for real? 
Disclaimer, disclaimer, don't do that at home. <laughs> All right. I hope you have a good time. And uh, I will let you go in peace and enjoy your day. Again, Happy New Year with the Lord, with the Messiah. And don't do this at home. If your wife, she broke your teeth or she <clears throat> hit you with something, I'm not responsible, okay? Disclaimer, I know you. And wives, don't use the method of Khadija with your husband if he is like tired and he is not in the mood. But if he's in the mood, you can find an excuse. He said to him, listen, <laughs> husband, I think you are a prophet. Don't you see somebody in the corner? Like, let us switch the, the reasoning. Maybe the woman, she is the one, she is missing her husband. So now she said to him, a husband, do you see somebody in the corner? He did not get it. Uh, no. Look again, look again. Don't you see somebody? I think there is somebody there. Mm -hmm. No. I'm telling you, I don't see anyone. Okay, listen, listen. What about you come and sit here and look again? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. I better go. Before women, they issue a wanted warn on me. He's wanted for corrupting our husbands, teaching them crazy stuff to practice on us. Unbelievable. Can I have Psalm 117? I have the video in my, my channel. Go back. I loaded the video, the whole video. Go back just two days ago. You will find it there and you can download it. All right, guys. I want to say thank you all for being here. I hope we learned good. And remember, we are not making fun just for the sake of fun. But I believe that the best teacher is the one who don't make the student get bored. Anyone get bored? Anyone here get bored? I hope not. So many go to school, right? And they start yawning. And they lose their interest after two minutes, three minutes, and they sleep. We praise the Lord. He gave us the ability, all of us together, so we can stay focused, studying, learning, fighting the garbage of the devil. In the same time, we are enjoying our time. I am very thankful for the Lord for his giving me the ability to keep people awake even though we speak for many hours. And that is very, very hard uh, to do for someone trying to keep people focused and listening and trying to learn. It's impossible, especially for somebody, it's just he is the only one who's talking. You know, usually, if you go to any program, you will see they need two, three, four people to make it like more, let us say more action, you know, like more, uh, to keep people awake and, uh, uh, to get the people attention. I'm just like one person talking alone. Uh, still, we are able to do uh, what we need to do. So I'm very grateful for the Lord for helping us and providing us with the knowledge and the ability and uh, what they call it in English, sense of humor. I will hammer you all, Abdul, next time. See ya. God is good. So is Jesus. And if this is your prophet, who is the devil then? And who is the fools? If a foolish man like Muhammad, he fool you, how fool are you? My Lord is the Lord of wisdom. He is not the Lord of ring and flying carpets and gog and magog, stupidity and dam and a sperm coming from the backbone and women have a sperm coming from their ribs, which means they have a breast testicles. My Lord is the Lord of wisdom. Go read his wisdom and laugh at your prophet. I leave you with the thighs of Khadijah, Muslims. And Christians, I leave you with the peace of the Lord. He said, peace I leave with you. Peace I give you. And peace will be with him when he come back to earth. God bless and see you soon again. This is your brother Christian Prince who is serving you humbly for today. See ya.